we have Malik Abdul, a Republican political strategist, live with us from Washington. And we're also joined by Khalid Baidun, a law professor at Wayne State University School of Law. Let's start with you, Malik. So critical race theory is an academic look at something. It's saying, let's look at the institutions within America that are supposed to ensure equality, our justice system, our education system. Let's just see if there are some contributing factors there that may have led some people to possibly being left out of the so-called American dream. Why is this concept of examining this so difficult for so many Republicans to stomach at this point, and beyond that, considered dangerous enough to ban it? Yeah, so there's a, there's a number of conversations that we're having in response to critical race theory, and in fact, you actually, um, your intro had very two big points that is important to make when we're talking about critical race theory. What Donald Trump was referencing when he actually issued that executive order to essentially study whether or not the federal government was um, banned or teaching critical race theory, he was referring to a pamphlet that the Smithsonian Museum, which is our national museum here, that the Smithsonian issued, um, they released a graphic that was titled Assumptions of White Culture. And so this is part of the discussion on critical race theory that Republicans are actually against. This teaching that somehow that there are assumptions about white culture, and particularly with that graphic, some of the things that were assumed to be white culture were being objective, being timely, support for white, you know, for um, law enforcement, and other things that aren't a white or a black thing, but critical race theory, people have adopted critical race theory to teach anti-race training and the Loudoun County schools that you actually, that your intro reference, that particular school district is teaching anti-racist training that their schools and administrators have to take those courses. So it's become a big issue because there's this push towards anti-racist training, and that's what Republicans have a problem with because critical race theory should only be taught at a college level, not in any of our schools or businesses. Yeah, but banning it outright in some school districts seems a very broad attempted remedy. It's something that could have positive aspects. Khalid, what do you think about this? Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for, for having me. Uh, I'm somebody who's been studying critical race theory for over 15 years, so I can remember when Nobody except a handful of academics within mm -hmm. law schools and academic institutions knew what critical race theory was. Uh, the, the sad reality is this, is that the um, the right and uh, Republican strategists like my co-panelists have really distorted what critical race theory means and have really distorted what critical race theory does. Uh, the central objective of critical race theory is to highlight how uh, American legal institutions and American law and policy has for a, for a long time, since the very inception, uh, of this country's existence, the United States' existence, um, has used law as an instrument, as a tool to exact racial inequality. And that is an undeniable fact. Uh, the second tenet of critical race theory, like your introduction has highlighted, is that race is a socio-political construction that is used um, to, to maintain um, and extend racial and economic inequality. That's a fact. And when my co-panelist says white culture, none of the canon within critical race theory discourse, and I've, I've read all of it, I, I know all the scholars within critical race theory, these are my colleagues, uh, there is no use of the phrase white culture. That is a misnomer. The phrase that is typically identified is white supremacy, the idea that whiteness and individuals who are white have been extended uh, a greater degree of uh, substantive citizenship, the idea that their skin has greater value in the United States. And that is an undeniable fact. Anybody who says otherwise is revising and distorting American history. That is all critical race theory does. And um, again, another myth is critical race theory is not taught in public schools. It is only taught in colleges and higher education in the United States. So this legislation is very dangerous, and it's especially dangerous on First Amendment grounds, right? Uh, free speech, free thought, which is very much the cornerstone of the American project. And I, you touched on something I wanted to ask Malik about. Isn't it true that there are many Republicans out there, for whatever reason, who are trying to make critical race theory into multiple things that it is not? For example, some have alleged that white pe it's teaching that white people ought to feel 
personally guilty for simply being white or that people should feel personally, personally responsible for events that happened a long time in the past or even that institutions should be dismantled. I mean, that kind of rhetoric doesn't help anyone, does it? Yeah, so there are a couple of things there. That's why I made the distinction in the um, early on talking about critical race theory and anti-racist training. What Republicans are actually objecting to is critical um, anti-racist training. I'll disagree with my colleague. Loudoun County Schools, the school that you actually featured in your opening, they are actually teaching critical race theory in their K through 12 schools. And in fact, they partner with an organization out of California called the, I think it's the Equity Collaborative, or I think that maybe it's the name, they actually have, as part of their district curriculum, critical race theory. And it's not even anti-racist training. They actually call it critical race theory. And to piggyback on that, it's not just schools that are, that are citing critical race theory, the actual phrase. It is our military. Just last week, and just last week our um, military leader, General, I can't think of his Millie, last name. Yeah, Mark General, Milley, the chairman um, of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, right? Right. He actually said in a congressional hearing that he not only supports critical race theory, but that he wanted to under he wanted to understand critical race theory so he can know what 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 white rage contributed to the January 6th um, riot. That's coming from our actual military. Now, personally, I don't think that the military is actually teaching critical race theory. But when you have people like our the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in a congressional hearing saying that he not only supports the teaching of critical race theory, but he wants to understand it so he'll know how to interpret the white rage that led to the January 6th riot. So it's not a, just a misnomer. These things are really happening. But again, a lot of what this discussion is about is anti-racist training. People have adopted it or applied it to mean various things. And it's not Republicans who are doing this. The facilitators of anti-racist training have adopted from critical race theory. And that's how we got to where we are now. And even last year's um, big debacle with the Smithsonian Instituting Institute here having to actually not just apologize, but remove the graphic on their website that actually talked about assumptions of white culture. Okay, so Khalid, isn't it true that there are some instances where people who are espousing the theory or trying to teach it might go too far? Because one of the things that makes critical race theory a target is that it can be really hard to put a box around where racial influence begins and ends when you're looking at an institution. You know, what is racism or what was based on other contributing factors? So aren't there some out there who are going a little too far in, in trying to look at institutions? Yeah, first, before I respond to that question, let me reply to my co-panelists and say I think that's a great thing that institutions like the military are citing critical race theory as an instrument to, um, you know, diminish and and erode racism within institutions like the military. I'm somebody who teaches constitutional law, and I can tell you that uh, every branch of the military has been riddled by racism for for a long time. So using any academic uh, sort of instrument, whether critical race theory um, or, you know, an anthropological, anthropological or sociological tool to do away with bad things is a good thing. Um, with, with, with regard to your question, I think, yeah, that's definitely true. I think, um, look, we're living in the United States during a time of uh, not only great racial polarization, but we're living at a time of great, uh, you know, and mass ignorance where people on the right and left gradients in between across the political spectrum, um, are just essentially adopting sound bites and slogans versus spending time to actually investigate and interrogate what the actual uh, canon, what the genuine sort of substance of discourses like critical race theory actually say and do. The Republicans are definitely doing that by making it a ideological boogeyman that it isn't. Mm. But there are also elements on the left that are doing the same. True. But you don't True. you don't blame the academic project um, for how its handlers are distorting, manipulating, and misusing it. Right. What you do is. You genuinely assess the academic project, what it means, what its baselines tell you, and what its objectives are to assess its merit and intellectual value. What you don't do, and what is entirely un-American, 
is to condemn an entire academic discourse and to police the free speech and the free thought of individuals, academic citizens, which smacks against the First Amendment. Um, what the Republicans are doing is akin to the scare tactics that was used against Sharia law five years ago to say that everything under Sharia law is an attempt um, by Islam to overtake the United States and Islamic values. So as a consequence of that, we saw similar bills being passed across the United States to condemn Sharia law, which again compromised the free exercise of religion rights of Muslims across the United States. This is exactly what's happening with critical race theory right now to essentially classify and brand it as an ideological boogeyman, which again only does one thing, and that one thing is to entirely bludgeon the First Amendment rights of Americans. You know, gentlemen, in any issue, going too far in the political rhetoric tends to hurt everyone. It hurts the other side, but it also tends to backfire. And you know what? I respect both of you for sharing your views, and I thank you for being respectful to each other, because that is something we don't see enough of in political discourse. Thanks so much for that.